So welcome to this problem number 854, which is the case similar strings. It's a lead code hard problem and it's a problem on strings as the name suggests. And as I usually say, this is not a hard problem. This problem just requires a basic understanding of how you know things are you know representing this problem into an easier format and you just have the answer right in front of you. Right. So let's quickly go through. So uh, in this problem, we are given two strings A and B and they are called k similar for some non-negative integer k. So for any you know, non-negative integer k, they are k similar. If we can swap positions of two letters in A exactly k times so that the resulting string equals to B, right? So we just make k swaps of individual characters in A, you get B, right? And what the question asks us to do is, given two anagrams A and B, return the smallest k for which A and B are k similar, right? So you're given A and B, and you you just you say that you know if you're given a uh, find the minimum number of swaps which are required for it to become b right and given b what are the minimum number of swaps required for it to become a right that is the simple question so uh, you know what is the thinking beside behind this question the, the best way of doing this would be to think this in terms of a tree and uh, so let's you know basically a tree in which the first node is the uh, the you know the node we are trying the string we are starting every subsequent the root nodes of those do, do the tree are nothing but just one swap away like the strings which are just one swap away and the, the children of the, those nodes will be one swap away them will be one swap away from that one so gradually we make this tree and if you we, what we then need to do is we just need to bfs through the entire tree and find the uh, the the string we want and then the height of the tree or the level of the tree will be the number of swaps we are required right because each and every swap just like each and every layer just adds one swap right so it's just uh, you know for example it's simply like uh, let's say we have uh, the string a b c the tree would be so this is just imagine this is a tree the tree would be uh, like c uh, b a so we just swap b a b and c then it will be b a c right and it could be like uh, also a uh, c b right these are all valid value strings but so basically when we are given this input a b c and b c a b c a does not come in this entire string so at least the answer of this is not one like the minimum number of swaps is not one but now when we actually replace this then we'll have b c a and subsequently for all of them right so this came in the second level and so two is the right answer because we require two steps to reach this so similarly if we are able to uh, you know have us basically make a tree of the entire uh, this entire setting and then just do a bfs then the height of the tree is what we need right so somehow we would want to write a function called bfs which would take in uh, these strings uh, a and b and it will return the uh, they are written the exact uh, height of the tree or return the number of swaps which are needed right so before that so basically the, this is this is something which will require a lot of swaps so to actually make us make all the swaps let's write write a swapper function right so basically void a swapper so c plus plus sender template library already has a swap function but sometimes in some cases i strongly recommend that i mean uh, you know recommend like recommending to imp you know, implement c plus plus functions again is a bad idea you cannot you should not implement like re-implement the complicated functions but some functions because you know this is the character level function sometimes the c plus plus library might act funky in those these similar functions so you should define them yourself because these are like easy so we need to uh, what we need to do is we just need to swap characters it's this very simple uh, you know character swap which you learned in the maybe the first few days of your programming the first lecture where uh, you know swapping was taught uh, this is a classic pointer example and uh, you know character temp we'll just have a character time we'll store a, a in temp a will then become b and then b becomes temp. right so with this we have the server method so we'll very easily able to swap whatever we need right so now let us define the entire bfs method the bfs method right so, uh, yes, so we, the BFS method is not what the BFS method uh, returns the int, the int is the height of the tree, it BFS, what it takes it, it takes it to string addresses, you know, B, A and B, let's have small A and small B, and what we would want to do is, you would want to make B the root node, and then find the entire uh, string, and reach a right you make a the root node or b the root node it does not matter but you know without the loss of generality we'll make b the root node right for this demonstration so first thing is clear that if in any case if a is equal to b 
right if a is equal to b then we are pretty sure that there are no swaps needed right we are there where we want to be right now what if like you know the the general normal case when a is actually not equal to b then we'll have to do the bfs right so uh, okay before we do the bfs we will want to uh, define a few variables uh, we would want to define a variable called idx which will actually uh, determine exactly where the swaps are needed to be done and we will be you know we'll be able to de defining these variables called swaps which will actually define the actual number of swaps we'll have a string called current which will make sure that you know we are processing it'll store the current string we are processing and then there are these special variables which are uh, you know the queue variables so basically if you want to do a bfs you will need to have a queue and you will need to have a uh, you know a, a container in which you can store what i have previously seen right so for storing what i have previously seen i can have an unordered set right unordered set uh, of strings right called viz so this is what i have already visited so if i you know i'll be keeping whatever i have visited in this unordered set right yes so uh, that is the case the second array which i uh, you know this the second thing which we would want is we would want to have a queue but this will be a special type of queue to do the bfs a queue which stores the data in this format stores the string which we are uh, you know currently talking about then you know the id where it needs to have the modification id where it needs uh, you know id like basically your id until uh, until where uh, sorting is done or matching is done so an id until which you know we have already matched the string which we need right so when the id becomes full then we have the entire string what we needed where the, the were matched id until matched right and the th second thing would be swaps till here so to reach to this string how many swaps are needed right yeah so uh, it will have a custom um, you know the you know, implementation queue so we'll just use the standard template library we'll have a queue data structure uh, what so basically how we do this we'll have uh, this uh, pair uh, well, we'll make a pair a pair of string right comma a pair of integers right yes so this is a little bit uh, complicated data so just understand it's a pair of pair of like it's a pair with string comma the these match the, these match and the swaps right the id uh, and the swaps right uh, q and we have the visited array so the first thing which we actually do is we first uh, you know input this the uh, the array we have also we might want to uh, initialize the answer so that if everything fails the minimum is zero so basically if uh, yes, there is some corner case then we will able to initialize the answer to be uh, zero cool uh, q pair string this is q the first thing which we push in the q is we push in the q b right the root node right uh, so basically what we do is q dot uh, push okay how will we push so basically we'll have to make so there is an emplace function we you could use that but for simplicity uh, i'm making this uh, using this pair function uh, q dot b and the other would be make pair 0 comma 0 so until we no array is sorted and we have not made any swaps to reach here because we are in the beginning right because it's a root node right uh, we also have to push uh, you know basically uh, insert uh, here now we have to insert b here so that we know that you know b is inside of inside of the visited we already visited b right so with this is done this is done uh, so let's uh, actually start the vfs starting the vfs right okay so as usual we start the vfl until uh, q is not empty is not q dot empty right uh, i might have a wrong spelling but that is something which you can figure out later yeah until q is not empty right uh, what we do is we would want to have a variable let's say call it t to be q dot front right so if i have the i leave the, the q dot front uh, if once we have this you know once we have q dot front uh, what I, what we would want to do is we would want to uh, Store the current string. The current string is nothing but a uh, you know p dot first, right? Because it is like uh, 
because it's the first element in the queue, right? Yes. So, yes. So, uh, you know, t dot first, that is the string, that is the current string. And uh, once you get the current string, what we need is, we need the uh, the, the IDX, like the where we actually have reached to, uh, like how many swaps have been matched until now. That will be t dot second dot first, right? Why? Because it is in the second pair of the, uh, of, of, our, of our queue, right? Of the queue structure, right? The number of swaps will be nothing but t dot second dot second, right? The second of the second pair. We do we just pop the queue, right? Once we pop the queue, uh, so basically we have to pop the first element of the queue because we just use and process the first element. So now uh, let's. So now now what we do is uh, find the ca character the index to be swap right so we don't want to find the index which is needed which is to be swapped now to basically you'll be like yeah idx is what needs to be swapped right but it might happen in the, in the target array after the idx it will all it, the array would already be matched right so until uh, we find something which is not matched like while uh, a dot idx uh, is equal to uh, you know current dot idx right we have to increment idx until we find out something which does not matches right you know once you have uh, something which does not match idx then what we can do is we can simply um, we, can, we can we can simply start from there we can simply start a for loop from there is equal to zero to uh, for loop uh, you know not from zero but from you know i like basically from the next element so basically we know that this is where the swap needs to be done we have to find which element we want to swap this with from the next element like from idx plus one to uh, i greater than um, until the end of the string so did we have any end of the string so let's have uh, because since a and b are anagrams anagrams means one string which we can just shuffle and make it into another the both of them have the same size so like int n is nothing but let's say b dot size right it's like b dot size cool right uh greater than n cool. mm -hmm. now um so now basically if right if we see that the uh, element that we are, you know where we are current of i if that is equal to a of idx right so basically now we have found out element after which after current of idx where which we have actually mapped with uh, a of idx right now we need to swap that element right so if this is true uh, what we would want to do is we would want to do uh, we, 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 would, we would simply want to swap that element so that is why we have this handy dandy uh, swapper method you know swapper the spelling yeah this yeah so you know I did not name this sub because they, you might override the std swap function. At swapper uh, current of i, can you just modify the current of i to current of idx, right? So basically, it'll just swap. So basically, the idx is where they supposed to uh, is supposed to be. I is where it is. So we just swap from you know current to idx. Now we match. Let's say suppose you know if this uh, you know if the array you know if the new current so now the current actually changed if current is equal to equal to what we want error uh, you know a then we just simply return swaps plus one right so this plus this this you know the uh, we, the, the current swap which are going on until now plus this swap which we manually did plus one is the answer to the question right and if not right if this is not the case then what what we would want to do is we would want to push this into the queue so we would want to just uh, say queue dot insert okay and then we'll uh, we'll first check that if we have not visited this right if not visited so basically if viz dot count of current is the basically if not if there is no count of this then what we do is we push it in the queue so basically queue dot push once again make pair make we make pair make pair of the current right comma make pair what we make pair we make pair of uh, uh you know i comma i so basically the idx plus one so basically there's one more element which is sorted in this and the swaps which we manually did right to reach here right so just simple idx plus one and we also have to push this into the 
not q wish wish dot insert so basically we in, insert this into the visualization so like in the in the visual so wish dot insert uh card, right yes so this is all done this is all done uh pretty sorted now uh we need to yeah so we pretty much done right this is uh now what we need to do is we need to return the default value right now to default now you know to uh, uh, return the default value oh before we return the default value yes we need to make sure that this array is back to where we are so basically we you know inserted this swap but you know where, where we found this match but you know the, the actual swapping can hap happen anywhere even after i so even after i if there are any matches until l then we would want to stop this so we just make sure that until this goes you know the i actually increments we just make sure that we put uh, all of this thing in the right place right so once again i and idx are swapped again so we just you know swap this and insert it into the array and let this process normally as it was doing right so this is done uh, once you know the entire while loop is over and once the function if nothing happens if there is no return then then we just return the minimum is the answer right yeah so let's test this let's test this code code out fingers crossed this might not run in the first attempt might have some silly mistakes but uh, i'm sure we'll debug them Yeah. Okay. Simple. Uh, yeah. Comma inverted comma errors. Yeah. Then you do a lot of programming in a lot of different languages. You know these things happen. Oh yeah. What is the other error? Okay. I did not write what is the uh, the increment condition, right? So we'll just do i plus plus here. Yeah. So it's see in computer coding, debugging, and actually doing this along with that is actually a part of part and pro, you know part of the process. We need to do it. Along, you know, whenever we want to submit code, we'll have to do it, and we need to do it. Uh, accepted. Let's try to submit this and uh, submit it. Right. So, uh, what, as what I was saying, this is a simple question, and this is this was just like looking at this traversing. This is a BFS and trying to find out where we are. Of course, there are more efficient ways of doing it, but this is the most simple. This is a very simple. You know, convert this into BFS and find the height of the. Uh, tree answer and it's a valid it's a simple valid answer uh, as i was saying that in computer coding you might not get you know accepted the test case might not turn in the first instance you might have made a lot of silly mistakes make sure that you have enough time left in the end to actually debug those silly mistakes right and make those silly mistakes so you don't make them again right that's that's the best part so thank you so much guys we'll see you in the next video with a new problem in the lead code hard category right thank you so much